Hello there, in today's video I want to go over six things that I want you to make sure you do in your OET writing in order to score well. Every case is going to be different because let's face it, every patient is different, we're never going to get two that are the same, so of course every letter is going to be different. And there's no point trying to have some kind of template that you can just churn out for every single letter. However, having said that, there are some essential things that you need to do in every single letter just to make sure you score well and that you are ticking those criteria boxes. Do you know what they are? Well, maybe you know some of them, maybe you just want to check. We're going to find out in this lesson with our essentials tick list. My name's Sona, I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. Thank you for joining me today and if you like this video please do click that like button or subscribe or share this with a friend or a colleague. So what we're going to do in order to create this essentials tick list and what I'd like you to do is kind of keep this tick list in your head so that in the exam you can just jot them down or you can mentally think, have I done these things? Um, and in order to create this tick list, we're going to look at a sample answer, which comes from the OET Online Nurses 5. And the reason we're doing this is because if we look at a sample answer, we will know what a good answer looks like. And if we know what a good answer looks like, then we can give them something similar when we write our own letters. So let's begin at the very beginning and it's probably something that you do know already and that's the addressee but I just want to point out a few things to you. What do I mean by the addressee? Well that's the person receiving the letter and you always put their title, first name and surname right at the top. You might well also know their job title in which case you put that in and then you have their address, which is probably split over three lines. So maybe the name of the place. Um, if not, it will be a street name and a town. Where do you find this information? Well, that's easy. It's in the writing task and it tells you address the letter to Ms. Jane Gold. Now you copy this down exactly. Don't change it at all. Every time there's a comma, put it on a new line. Okay, it's that's how we do it. The other place you need to write to the addressee is in the dear line. So dear Ms. Gold. Here you just need to write their title and their surname. Don't worry about their first name. It's not important. And whatever you do, please don't write dear Ms. Jane because that's not what a formal letter looks like. We always use dear title Ms, Mr, Mrs, Doctor, and their family name. Okay, number two is the date. And again, you may be thinking, I know this already, but bear with me because I just want to point out a couple of things to you again. The date is given to you, so it will never be the date you're actually doing the exam on. They always tell you, assume that today's date is and it will always be a date in the past. Just copy it down exactly. Don't try and change it to numerical form. Don't write 150521. Just copy it exactly. Okay, number three then on our checklist are the re-lines. And I talk about lines for a reason. Re is who the letter is regarding. So this is your patient, Mr. George Gale, and it comes underneath the dear. Now, in all the new samples, which is a little bit different from the old samples, and I've gone through all of these, so I've double checked, the date of birth always comes below, one line below the re line. So this is something fairly new, I think, that OET has standardised because before we sometimes used to write their DOB in brackets just along here. 
But if you take a look at all the samples, and as I say, I've done that, all the new samples, the latest samples, seem to have the date of birth on the line below. So let's do that. Let's keep it that way. Let's follow OET and what they're showing us, and we will copy the same thing. Now, DOB, date of birth, is always in capitals. No little dots after it. DOB, and then we have our colon. Again, where do we find this information? Well, this will be given to you in the patient details. And just copy it. 24 April 1936. You don't even need to write April. They don't in the sample, so you don't need to either. You don't need to put it in numerical form. 24 slash 04 slash 36. No, just copy it down exactly. And the other place where you need to refer to the patient is in your opening. And I think it's always nice to give the patient's full name here, Mr. George Gale, post for care. So make sure you refer to the patient in your opening. OK, number four, again, keeping with the opening, is the reason for writing. And this comes into the category of purpose in criteria. And in purpose, you need to make the reason you're writing very clear. So you can see here, it is very clear. I'm writing to provide a brief summary of this background and plan for temporary residential care upon discharge. Now you get this from the task. Please don't stop reading here. <laughs> Lots of people do. They say, oh, this is a discharge letter. I'm going to stop reading. Don't. Keep going and look at what your task is asking of you. You need to briefly outline Mr. Gale's history. So you're writing to provide a summary of his background, as well as your concerns and recommendations. So this comes under the plan on discharge. So in your opening, make sure you are cross-referencing the task and you're including all aspects of your task in the opening so that it's nice and clear. You also back this up at the end. So just before you close, make sure you reiterate, you restate the same things in a different way. Okay, number five is the relationship. So this might be something new for you, but please make sure that you make it clear if there's any kind of existing relationship or if it's a new relationship. And by relationship, I mean, how does the reader know the patient or how does the writer know the patient? What is their connection? In this case, the reader doesn't really know the patient at all because they're someone new. They're just coming to the reader for temporary care. So here we go. Thank you for taking over his care. And again, it's very clear that this is temporary care. So you've made it very clear that the reader doesn't know the patient. It's somebody new. You could also have said, I'm writing to introduce Mr. George Gale, who is coming to you for temporary residential care following a fall. And that would be fine. It's an introduction. So that's another way of saying it. OK, finally, number six on your tick list then is the timeline. So make sure throughout your letter that anything that's happened and when it's happened is very clear. So here we have on the 9th of May, he had a fall. He actually fell ill. He actually felt ill two weeks prior to this. Um, and this is what the state is now. He now has reduced mobility. So make sure that the timeline is very clear so the reader knows what happened and when it happened. That's something else that students often forget, which is why I'm mentioning it here and I want you to put it on your tick list. So the six things on your tick list then should be the addressee. Make sure you're copying things down very carefully and that you've included all the details that you need to. Make sure you've included the date correctly. Make sure that the reline is there plus the date of birth underneath. And in your opening, you have also referred to the patient in full. 
then make it very clear in your opening the reason you're writing and again use the task to help you if there's an existing relationship between the reader and the patient then make this clear i am writing to discharge your patient back to you maybe if it's a gp or i'm writing to introduce a new patient to you or i'm writing about a patient who's coming to you for temporary care so make it nice and clear similarly if it's your patient you're writing about then say so i am writing about my long-term patient so make that relationship clear and finally make the timeline clear tell the reader what happened and when it happened so make sure you do all these things in your letter and that will put you in really good stead to score well and it will tick off lots of things on your criteria list as well okay well i hope you enjoyed that if you did it would be so lovely if you could help me grow this channel by subscribing or sharing and liking it would be so nice if you could do that and if you'd like to sign up for a newsletter i've got a free newsletter for a regular dose of all things oet and there is a little sign up link in the box below thanks very much for watching hope to see you again soon i've got over 200 videos for you so i'm sure there's something you can find that you like um, and see you there take care bye bye